Okay, so before we get started, I usually wait till the very end to do this kind of shit, but um, I can't help myself. So for the first time ever, there is Fan Jerry merch available in link in the description uh, picture here. Uh, it's R.I.P. Fan Jerry merch. I'm gonna try to capitalize on the fact that everybody thinks I'm dead. So, yeah, Fan Jerry merch. So I grew up in a place with a nickname of Wiggletown. It's got three trailer parks in the immediate area and then a couple of back roads with some super low quality housing. My dad grew up in the nicest house in the area and he actually still lives there today and it's I mean it's a nice house it's the house I grew up in but everywhere around our house is the equivalent to Sandy Shores and GTA like uh, except for our house it's just like this gem in the middle of all of this. So when I was 15 I got my first job. I worked in this little convenience store slash redemption center nicknamed the Wiggletown Walmart. So it was a convenience store and a redemption center. Uh, redemption center is a place where you get your, you pay your bottle deposit tax, that five extra cents in the register, there's like 10 or 15 states or so that do this, and then you can bring them back to these places, or uh, in stores like Walmart they have these little, they call them reverse vending machines where you can put them in and it gives you back your money. And then it was a convenience store as well. It sold beer, overpriced groceries, and it had this very questionable little deli attached to it that sold ice cream all year round, even in upstate New York. And we had this special little section in the back for like the local people in the trailer parks, and it was filled with grab bags. And what grab bags were, these plastic bags about, I don't know, yay big, filled with slightly expired food, and we sold them for a dollar a piece. The guy that owns the store um, was getting on this food for free, basically, and he was selling it back to them for a dollar. So I started working there when I was like 15, uh, for minimum wage, about 30 hours a week. In the beginning while I was working there, all I did was push bottles into those reverse vending machines. I would just stand there all day and just push those bottles into those uh, reverse vending machines. And when you put those bottles in there, it counts it, it crushes it, it separates it from plastic to tin, and it puts it into uh, five by five bins that are underneath the machines. So I would just stand there all day and push these bottles into these machines. Somebody else had the full-time job of taking laundry baskets, scooping up bottles and cans, and putting them in front of me so that I didn't even have to go get more. They got delivered to me. Then when I was like 16, I got promoted to the bottle counter, where I would once again literally stand there, and people would bring garbage bags full of beer cans that was moldy and disgusting, and soda cans, and used spitters for the tobacco users, and all this stuff, and I would sit there and take them out of the bags and count them. As I was counting them, I would throw them down under, underneath the counter behind me into these empty 50-gallon uh, trash cans. And then when I filled up those 50-gallon trash cans, I would pick them up and throw them into these 5x5 five five and like 4-foot tall bins that were uh, just filled to the brim with bottles and cans. So they'd be dragged outside uh, back near where the reverse vending machines were. The glass was separated and it was put into uh, used 48 packs and that was brought into the back as well and those were put in a special reverse vending machine that was just for glass. And then right before I turned 18 or just after I turned 18 I started being a cashier and I would just sit there uh, cash people out for their bottles and cans like whatever the counter said I would give them their money and they would spend it in the convenience store right afterwards. And I always did closing shift, so I was like the guy in charge while we were there. I wouldn't say I was the manager or anything, but I was the guy in charge of all the other employees closing up the store, counting all the money, doing all the bank deposits, putting everything in the safe, counting all the cigarettes, and inventorying everything, making sure everything was clean and locking. So when I started working there, minimum wage was like $7.25. This was in 2008-ish. And then when I quit working there, I was making like 14 or $15 an hour, still basically under the table, which was great for a college dropout that was just waiting to join the Marine Corps. So we sold uh, K2, Spice, whatever you want to call it, and we sold it by the gram and by the eighth. And we sold a lot of it. Like, a ridiculous... I think my boss at one point in time said he was making $5,000 a day just off K2 sales. 
and employees would also buy it and go directly out back and smoke it on the clock. I honestly don't even think the owner cared, but um, he might have, I don't know. So one of the employees, Ronnie, let's call him, came up to me while he was working and got an eighth of the special stuff we had called Lights Out. And he said, because you can take a hit of it and you're out cold, tripping balls. He went directly out back and started smoking it. When he came back, he was the guy that was filling the laundry baskets out of the 5x5 five five bins and putting them in front of the people feeding the reverse vending machines. That was his job to the day. He was just scooping up bottles, putting them in front of other people. Remember when I said the glass was separated? Well, every once in a while, people would fuck up and there would be glass inside of those 5x5 five five bins. And glass breaks stuck in the side of this plastic 5x5 five five bin. There was a piece of glass about yay big. Ronnie went in, super high, scooped out a bunch of bottles, put them in front of somebody. Went back, scooped more, was just doing his thing. And then someone looked down and said, Ronnie, you're bleeding. And he wasn't like kind of bleeding, like he nicked himself or whatever. He was bleeding a lot. Ronnie then takes his hand and puts it up to his face and notices that he's not missing one finger, but he's also missing this top portion of his ring finger on his right hand. Ronnie then passes out and they take him to the hospital. They found his pinky finger inside the bin of bottles, but I don't think they found the tip of his ring finger. But, um, so they actually put his pinky finger back on. So obviously you had a forklift to move around these big bins of glass and plastic and cans and all the other stock for the store, all this expired food, all of these groceries and a lot of beer. So I started driving the forklift when I was like 16 and I never got my license. I was just driving it around anyways. It's not like anybody there, I don't think anybody there had their license except maybe one person to make the state think it's not suspicious. So I was out there messing around in it one day doing for donuts in the parking lot and it flipped. So I got ejected out of it, didn't have a scratch in my body, ran back inside and started working my register. About five minutes later, Bob was running into the store screaming, Jerry, somebody flipped the forklift. I don't know what happened. And I said, oh my God, really? Like, what the hell? So I run out there and I look at it with the flip forklift and I'm like, what the, who did this? He was like, I don't know, I just saw it here. So I had to go inside and call my boss. I called my boss, I was like, hey, Bob just told me that somebody flipped over the forklift and I run out there and the forklift is indeed flipped over. Bob doesn't know who did it. And my boss was like, do you think Bob did it? And I was like, I don't know, I think so. He was the one that noticed it. He's not giving anybody else's name up. So Bob gets on the phone. Bob is promptly fired. Bob had the next two days off of work anyways. I think it was Saturday and Sunday, he had the weekend off. He just showed back up to work on Monday like nothing had ever happened. And my boss, I don't know if he didn't notice or if he just didn't care and he was like, fuck it. And he just, started working again. So he was never even taken off the payroll. So that ended in a happy story. So about four months or so before I quit to join the Marine Corps to go to boot camp, I was working the register and I was 18, I was skinny, I was single, and I was pretty full of myself. So I was always flirting with the cute girls that were working at the register. So I asked her for ID so I could look at it, see if she was 18. She didn't have it. My boss was standing right next to me at the time, refilling cigarettes, and he was like, sorry ma'am, can't sell it to you, you don't have your ID. I looked at my boss and I said, no, it's okay, I know who she is. I just wanted to get her ID to make fun of her picture. She's 18. My boss said, okay, let me sell them to her, he trusted me. Unfortunately, I never seen this chick a day before in my life. She was just cute, so I was trying to help her out, flirt with her a little. Turns out, she was 17 and working for the state on a sting operation to see who's selling tobacco to minors. $20,000 in court fees and lawyers later, my boss lost his tobacco license. But being the creative guy he was, he portioned off a corner of the store and rented it to one of the employees, one of his employees that was working in the main store so that he could run a smoke shop. Of course, the boss actually owned this too and the guy that was running it was just giving all the money to him. But um, that was this clever workaround for 
losing the tobacco license, so it all kind of worked out in the end. But thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed this story time. Uh, see you later.